This is the John M. Bernheisel letter that was written November the 16th, 1841. This John Bernheisel, who was a bishop of the church in New York, he became quite enamored with this New York Times best-selling book on the Central American uh, civilizations that, that showed these grand ruins. And then he was desirous to give a copy of these books to the prophet, who was a good friend of his. Well, Wilfred Woodruff was actually coming back from a mission over in Europe at the time and stopped in New York, and they apparently met and got the, uh, the gift that he wanted to give to Joseph Smith, gave it to Wilfred Woodruff, who then took it to Nauvoo to give to the prophet. Now, it's a pretty good uh, possibility that Wilfred Woodruff may have actually read some or if, if not all of these uh, books on his way to see the prophet. We don't know whether he did or not. But uh, then when Joseph Smith got the, the books, then a while later, then he had a letter that was written in November the 16th of 1841. And this is what the letter says. This is Joseph Smith thanking uh, John Bernheisel for the gift of the books. I receive your kind present by the hand of Elder Woodruff and feel myself under many obligations for this mark of your esteem and friendship, which to me is the more interesting as it unfolds and develops many things that are of great importance to this generation and corresponds with and supports the testimony of the Book of Mormon. I have read the volumes with the greatest interest and pleasure and must say that of all the histories that have been written pertaining to the antiquities of this country, it is the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive. What most people who, who uh, use this as an evidence that Joseph Smith's mind was changing on the geography of the Book of Mormon um, to a Mesoamerican setting that, uh, that they don't normally tell you is that this letter is acknowledged by church historians to have been written not by Joseph Smith, but by John Taylor, who wrote the letter for Joseph Smith. Now, it is not known if Joseph Smith actually proofed the letter that was being sent. It could be as simple as that Joseph Smith said, would you please write a letter to John Bernheisel and thanking him for the books, in which John Taylor then wrote the letter and, and sent it off. And John Taylor, who never claimed to have received any revelation on the geography of the Book of Mormon, was also one of the editors of the Times and Seasons and is well known by historical documents that he was quite enamored with Stephen's book and in fact had uh, written other articles and so forth in regard to that. Now, there's one section that I'd like to return back to in this because I think this is important. This is from the letter from Joseph Smith to John Bernheisel. It says, of all the histories that have been written pertaining to the antiquities of this country, it's the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive. What country are we talking about here? What did the prophet mean by this country? If the Book of Mormon is a historical record of the civilizations of Central America, why would Joseph Smith consider Stephen's book, Incidents of Travel in Central America, to be the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive history of this country rather than the Book of Mormon itself? If the Book of Mormon is a history of Central America, then would not it be the most comprehensive, correct, and luminous of that country? And what country are we talking about? Well, it's obviously it's talking about Central America because that's the name of Stephen's book. So you see how that doesn't really match. Um, Joseph Smith would have certainly thought the Book of Mormon to be the most comprehensive of this country. This is John M. Bernheisel in regard to the Bernheisel manuscript. Before the prophet's death, he was working on an inspired version of the Bible and had his manuscript and his notes there. And then he was killed and John Bernheisel asked the prophet's wife, Emma, if he could take those notes and transcribe them for the prophet. And the following is actually was, was written in the margins of those notes that uh, John Bernheisel was doing. Revelation given to the prophet Joseph Smith the exact date this revelation was given is not known, but it is possible that it was given during the dedicatory services of the Kirtland Temple in March of 1836. This is not good evidence when you don't have a source document and, and we don't even know the date or what it, was, what it was. In other words, it might have been this. 
the course that Levi traveled from the city of Jerusalem to the place where he and his family took ship, they traveled nearly a south-southeast direction until they came to the 19th degree of north latitude, then nearly east to the Sea of Arabia, then sailed in a southeast direction and landed on the continent of South America in Chile, 30 degrees south latitude. And this was in the Bernheisel Manuscript, page 135. This was actually written in the hand of Frederick G. Williams, according to historians. It has no heading, it's not attributed to either Joseph or Revelation, and yet it has been assumed by many to have been received by the prophet Joseph Smith, that somehow Lehi landed in Chile, in South America. There's no historical precedence for that. There's no, uh, there's no historical evidence for that. This is actually from Robert J. Matthews, BYU Studies, Volume 11, 1971. He said that the Bernheisel manuscript is an interpretive copy of the originals and could not have been the basic source for the Moses and Matthew materials in either the 1851 or 1878 editions of the Pearl of Great Price. Dr. Bernheisel did not make a simple transcription of the originals, but did some adapting, interpreting, judging, thinking for himself. He also made some explanatory comments beyond the content of the original documents that he was copying. What some have thought is that these, these articles in 1842 and 43 um, that talk about the Mesoamerican setting for the Book of Mormon are, are thought that Joseph Smith was, was slowly changing over from a North American uh, setting for the Book of Mormon, which he clearly indicated in, back in 1832 and 33 when he sent the missionaries and so forth there to the Indians in the West and uh, so forth, and that Joseph Smith's mind was slowly changing over into, a, uh, into the Central American setting. In his book, An Ancient American Setting for the Book of Mormon, Dr. Sorensen has this quote, and this is on page number one of this book. The historical sources give no indication that Moroni's instructions to young Joseph Smith included geography, nor did Joseph Smith claim inspiration on the matter. That is simply historically not correct. Ideas he later expressed about the location of events reported in the book apparently reflected his own best thinking, meaning that since Joseph Smith made these comments in 1832 and 1833 and so forth, and then later appeared to be changing his mind in the times and seasons with unsigned articles that were written by editors who, uh, who wrote in a completely different manner than Joseph Smith, um, that, that his views on the matter were, were evolving. These are LDS scholars discounting or disdaining Joseph Smith's knowledge of Book of Mormon geography. I've deliberately withheld the references because this is not about the individuals and their statements specifically. This is about where these individuals had to uh, go in order to help understand that Joseph Smith may have been changing his mind and moving from a North American setting where the Hill Camorra actually was to a Central American setting. And since Moroni offered Joseph Smith only a brief sketch, it is unlikely that he revealed to Joseph a comprehensive knowledge of Native American origins. Another one writes, it is important to understand that Joseph Smith did not have access to this knowledge. He translated the book, but apparently did not know the scope of its geography. Exactly what Joseph Smith believed at different times in his life concerning Book of Mormon geography in general is also indeterminable. Evidently, Joseph Smith's views on this matter were open to further knowledge, meaning that as he learned more from Stephen's book, that he then made the switch over from North America into Central or Mesoamerica. Did Joseph Smith's understanding of the location of the Lamanites actually evolve? This is from Joseph Smith's own diary, one month before he was killed. This is Thursday, May the 23rd of 1844. 1 p.m. Held counsel with the Indians, Sack and Fox, in my back kitchen. They had some questions about selling their land, and Joseph Smith advised them not to sell their land anymore. I replied, Great Spirit wants you to be united and live in peace. I found a book presenting them with the Book of Mormon, which told me about your fathers and Great Spirit told me. You must send to all the tribes you can and tell them to live in peace. And when any of our people come to see you, treat them as we treat you. Was Joseph Smith's knowledge actually evolving? 
because he went right back to the same Indians that he had before. Ronald W. Walker, who is a wonderful historian of the church in uh, Journal of Mormon History, 1993, Seeking the Remnant, the Native American in the Joseph Smith period. There were a few last events that gave his, meaning Joseph Smith's, career symmetry. He had begun preoccupied by the Lamanite and interested in the West. And his final days had similar themes. Five days before his death, Smith and his closest associates passed over the Mississippi River. Standing on a small house frame, he spoke to his followers before going to fateful Carthage. You will yet be called to go to the strongholds of the Rocky Mountains, Smith predicted. You will gather the red man from their scattered and dispersed situation to become the strong arm of Jehovah. Where were these red men that Joseph Smith was talking about? He knew that they were going to the west, to the Rocky Mountains, which is again in North America in the Promised Land. Brother Walker continues, The millennial Book of Mormon expectation of the Lamanite, so bright and exciting at the start, became in the course of events not just a promise, but a burden. The demands of this obligation brought church members from New York State to Missouri and began their movement to the West. In a millennial outburst of faith, the first Mormons had sought the remnant, and their quest shaped their movement's history. Bottom line is, I believe that Joseph knew. I don't think that it was any coincidence that, uh, and I don't see any indication five days before his death that he had evolved at all when it came down to the geography of the Book of Mormon because he had those Indians in his own kitchen and told them that the Great Spirit had told him that they were, in fact, those people who are written of, in their, that their history is the Book of Mormon. So if there was any evolving going on, it was within the early brethren of the church. But there is no solid indication from historical documents that Joseph Smith ever claimed the Book of Mormon to have occurred in Central or Mesoamerica.